Alright, hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. My camera is not straight, is it? Yes, yes, okay. Hello and welcome to another Solana tutorial. Today, I want to go through the basics of working with PDAs, specifically how to map data using PDAs. This is a short little extra video. I'll be discussing some computer science fundamentals like what are sets and what are dictionaries. And then we want to relate that to working with PDAs on Solana and how to store our data there. And to do this, I'm going to use Python as a language because that's just a language that can easily be understood in my opinion. So we're going to do some Python coding and we want to use the knowledge we gain from there to have a better understanding of how to do stuff on Solana. That's the plan. So I am going to go down here, open up a Jupyter notebook and let's do some Python. Very basics of data storage and and data structures. Maybe let's start with the things that most people know. If you want to store some data, you might just put them in an array or in a list. So I can have my list L in Python. Let's make it a numbers list. One, two, three. Boom. Cool. I have my list now. If I type L and execute that, then it outputs me the list. One, two, and three. Now, a list is ordered, so three, two, one is a different list than one, two, three. And I can add elements to my list like append another two, execute that. And if I then I have a list of one, two, three, two. Right? So far, so simple. You know that it's similar to an array, just that it doesn't have a predefined size. So that is something that everybody should understand, right? And let's maybe work with the example of a white list, which has list in the name. So, I mean, it totally makes sense to make that as a list, right? So let's have our white list be like, uh, so I don't know, Andy is on the list and um, Bob is on the list and so on. And I could have, you know, several people on the list. I could build a white list like that. If we were to now do this on Solana, we could, of course, create one account that stores a list. And the data structure there would be a vector because we only have arrays or vectors on Sol. But the difference here is not too important. Essentially, putting all of the elements after each other in like a vector or array. If we know the size before, then we can have it in an array. In an array. We could totally do that. So far, so good. I think everybody understands what a list is, just elements after each other. Now, a set, a little bit less known mathematical definition of a set. Each element is either in the set or not in the set, but it can't be like in the set twice. So a set is just a set of elements. Uh, don't use the same word to describe what it is. That doesn't make sense. So if I had a set of numbers. I could be like number one, number two. That's a set now. I'll put my set. I have number one, number two, and I can add stuff to my set. I can say add number three. Execute that. Show me my set. Then I have one, two, three. But if I now add another number like two again, even if I execute that, my set still is just one, two, three. It doesn't matter how often I add the two, it will always just contain those three elements because the two is already in the set. And the set also doesn't really have an order. If I add the zero, it's suddenly at the very front, right? So there, there is no order in the set. If I were to do this in the list and I add it again and I add it again and I add it again, the list gets longer and longer. The set doesn't. And it also doesn't have an order, right? So a set can just tell me, is the element in there or not? Something like one in set. This will give me true because 
one is inside my set S. If I were to ask is five in my set S, that would be false. Okay, so that's a set of numbers. We can of course build a set of whatever. We can build a uh, names set of strings, Andy and Bob. And that already looks similar to my whitelist, except that if I add Andy again, Andy is still just once on the whitelist. So it doesn't matter how often he signs up for the whitelist, he will just be on there once. That's a set. So far, so good. Now, how could we build such a set on Solana if you want to store a whitelist that way? Well, we can make use of PDAs, specifically how we derive them. Because remember, in the last lesson, which I'm gonna link above here, we talked about deriving a PDA from some seeds and the program ID. And we said that if we put in the same seeds, we will get the same PDA back. So the same address if we provide the same seeds. And now we could do something like this and derive the address just based on our whitelist entry. Of course, that wouldn't be just the string Andy, but it would like be a pub key. And you know, it would be just Andy's public key and his address. And then I would provide that public key as a reference to derive and then also to sign. And all we would need to do is create an account with the system program. We don't even need a size. We can set the size to zero just creates the account, we don't need data on it. And that would already be enough to answer the question, is Andy on the whitelist? Because we can then just derive the same thing again with the public key as a reference and that program ID, and then use get account info and check if that account exists. And if the account exists, it, it would mean that Andy or whatever the public key is, is inside names. Because here's the thing, if we try to add Andy again, if we do that one more time with the same public key here, then we would get the same PDA and then this wouldn't even work anymore because we can't create the account another time. So this would fail. And for each of our entries in the whitelist, we could then just create such an account. First we derive the PDA and then we create the account. And if the account is created, then that means there is an entry on the whitelist for that specific public key. And like that, we can check if an entry is on our whitelist. You can also do it the other way around. Um, like this, you could also implement if somebody has already claimed, like if you want one claim per wallet, you could do something like this, that for that one wallet, when it claims, you create an account and then you just check every time if that account already exists for that specific wallet before you allow them to claim. Because if it exists, they have already claimed. That way you could build yourself a set. Set can be useful, but usually we want a proper map. First though, let's discuss why this set is a better implementation than if we were to do it with a list. Because you know, we could also do it with a list. We just create one PDA, something like whitelist. We just need one PDA. And inside this whitelist, we can have a vector of all the entries of our whitelist. That would work. However, it comes with disadvantages. First of all, only one user can add to the whitelist per block because obviously it's just one account and there can only be one parallel right, but for only reading the whitelist, it should be fine. So that can go in parallel. Bigger problem though, is when the whitelist gets too large, because in order to find out if an element is within the list, what we need to do is check if the element that we're searching for is the first element. If no, is it the second element? If no, is it the third element? If no, is it the fourth element? And so on and so on and so on. And if the list is too long, then we run out of compute before we find 
our element or decide that it's not in there when we went through all of them. With a set, we can immediately go to the element that we're searching for. Usually it's a hash set. And in this case, because we can directly find the right address where this is supposed to be stored at, and then we just look at that address. So we go there directly. No matter how many entries we have in our whitelist, if we do it like that, there can be thousands, millions of accounts. We can immediately find that one account that stores our information. And we don't need to iterate through a list. So this is in constant time, whereas the list would be linear time. If you don't understand that, that's fine. Point being, this needs less compute than if we were to search through our list, which could result in us running out of compute because we just need too long, too many steps to find the element in our list. That's why the set for this is better than a list. This was just a set. Most of the times what we want is a map or what is in Python called a dictionary. A dictionary is like a set, except that it also has values for each of the entries. And then we call those entries keys. So a dictionary will have key value pairs. For instance, I could add into my dictionary the key Andy, and I don't know, let's do how many claims he has. Like Andy can have three mints or whatever. He can, you know, mint three times, right? Add that, check out our dictionary. Now it looks like this. Key Andy has value three. And we can, you know, add more things. Uh, we can also put Bob in our dictionary and say, he just gets to claim one. And I don't know, some OG wallet gets 10 and I execute that. And then my dictionary looks like this. I have the three keys, Andy, Bob, and OG, and the corresponding values to them. If I now add Andy again, it will overwrite what is currently in there. So I can't have two keys that are the same inside a dictionary, because obviously the keys of the dictionary are themselves a set. So if I were to say Andy gets five claims, then that changes my dictionary and the entry of Andy is now five and not three anymore. Here I just had one number. I can of course put whatever I want in here. This thing be yet another dictionary or whatever. But to keep it simple, first we just store one number for each entry. And we can do the same with PDAs because the accounts can store data. That's the whole freaking point of those Solana accounts. They can store data. They have a data field. So when we do that, that we map each of the public keys to a PDA, we can now create an account with a certain size. I don't know if we were to just store one byte a number between zero and 255. And then after we created this account, da -da -da, similar to what we were doing here, we first unpack this and then we could write to it. So we would just, we would just have something like, we would have a struct where we essentially just store one U8 of claims that it might look something like this, I don't know whatever we set our data to, right? So we derive the PDA for a specific pub key. This is not how you do it in Rust, is it? Whatever, really we would get it from the accounts. So it would look something like this. And like this, we can build such a dictionary or a map, hash map kind of thing by putting the key in the derivation path of the PDA and having the value being the data of the PDA. And you know, there we, we could have more stuff in here, like whatever kind of struct we might want to build here. We could have another public key and whatever, whatever, whatever. We can just put them in the data. And then 
our dictionary might look something like, right? So there will be then one entry. And getting the data would then just be the same as first deriving the same PDA and then get account info for that PDA and reading the data on it as it was serialized in that format. Of course, we might not only want to have one dictionary in our program, so we might want to use an additional seed like this is our whitelist and then the entry because then we can have a whitelist map and a whatever map. Just don't forget to also put it down here. And that's how you create a map using PDAs. Take the key, put it inside the derivation path of a PDA, create the PDA, and then every time you want to access it, you just always need to provide the same key again. So this is the key and the data of the account is then the value. That's how you create those key value pairs. And that's how we store data on the Solana blockchain. We will always want to have some kind of keys. It can be a combination of keys. There can be several pub keys up here as well. So we take all of them as the key and then we have the data of the PDA as the value. That's the one thing that you need to get in your head once, you need to understand that once, and then it should be fairly easy to work with. And this is just such an essential thing of understanding if you start out programming on Solana that I wanted to make a separate video on that, just explaining that one more time, a little bit slower, and I hope that it helped. Let me know if I didn't do a good job explaining that, then I can try it one more time, going even slower on the whole, what is a list, what is a set, what is a dictionary, and how is that all set up using PDAs. What I did here, of course, is just pseudocode. This is not actually executable. I just copied some stuff together. If you want me to, I can make yet another video on it, or maybe do a live stream where you can ask questions. Let me know in the comments. Join my Discord, tell me there, what you want to see next. And uh, otherwise, check out the videos from the Solana Dev Course and all the other videos that I do around here. And then I'll see you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye.